All right, I'm going to call this meeting to order at 6.05, the time I have. And we'll get started with item number one, approval of June 17th, uh, 2021 meeting agenda. Move to approve. Uh, we have a couple add-ins here, don't we? Joel, didn't you have a couple you wanted to add to the list? Oh, yeah. Uh, so that we have uh, 49 Louise View Drive and 77 Valley Crest Way. And these were deferred at a previous meeting. I think the, was it the 527? And the comments sent to the builder and uh, the builder has corrected uh, all, of, all of the issues for 77 Valley Crest. Um, still a couple of, uh, uh, just one issue remains on 49 Louise View uh, with uh, some discussion, I think required about uh, some of the, the policy uh, concerning slopes. Mm, yeah, I read that. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, I don't want to get into a long agenda tonight. It's a night meeting. It makes it tough. So uh, I'd like to keep it short. I don't know how you feel they're qualified to be on tonight I'll, I'll, or begin tonight. I'll let you uh, decide that, Joel, if you think they're ready. I believe the, seven, the, 70, the 77 Valley Crest, I, I, I'm happy to move forward with. I, I, I'd like to respect your time as well. I don't think it'll take take very long you know we've gone through gone through this one before so if we just stick to the the items that have been addressed i think it'll all right really I, quick. I read through your email this afternoon and saw where they had resolved everything so yeah. i don't have a problem with that one that one should go fast all right willing to add that to the agenda what was the other one joel 49 louise view drive so there was uh, um, the two things remaining were they still need to obtain permission from the neighbors to remove some trees that are on the neighbor's lot and it will probably damage the roots. Uh, SVCA tried to tried to dig up contact information for those neighbors and we they didn't have anything on on file. So wow, uh, we we yeah, I, I not was, uncommon. Shockingly, a yeah. lot of residents don't supply contact information, which is wild. Mm -hmm. So then the solution for that is to um, have the builder uh, leave a note on their door, um, try to get permission. So they're asking for pre-approval, you know, pre-approval contingent and then contingent on that. And then uh, discuss, there might be a small discussion about um, slope language in, in the policies. That might, that might take us uh, some time to debate. Yeah, I think we should defer that till next meeting. We'll see how much time we have left at the end of the meeting. Yeah, that's a good this. idea. Shouldn't take too long. Most of these, maybe. It seems like they have a disagreement as to whether it should be horizontal over vertical or vertical over horizontal. And I really don't care. I just we just need to talk on where we understand what the slope is and what we expect to have done. Well, and his and idea of the slope is wrong. different. Yeah, if we're saying it wrong, then we ought to correct it in the documents. But hopefully that's not a long discussion. I mean, I think everybody has an opinion of what you do when you get to a one-to-one -one slope. You don't, if mulch and stuff doesn't stay on it, you need to put some kind of, uh, in my opinion, you need to put some kind of a retaining wall in. I, I agree with you, Bruce. I wouldn't disagree with that either. Is that where we were going with that, Joel? That, that was uh, that was what I, we had the comment we had proposed to the builder, and uh, retain as plans were sent back. Retain wall was not proposed on there. Um, there there was a comment from the builder that was that was on the plans had the forty five degree slope when we did view this last time, uh, and then they would add some language to be matted. Um, and I I didn't get a, a reason why they uh, did not propose retain wall, but the the just the, the disagreement about how the slope should be uh, interpreted versus what the policy said and how it normally is. Yeah. But I'll, All right. I'll second a motion to approve the meetings with those ads. 
Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see uh, three winter creek place actually on the agenda that was posted, but uh, that should be on there too, right? Oh, was I just keep looking at what's on that AC on the uh, on that uh, website on the spreadsheet there, oh, and I keep using that as my list. But yeah, that's kind of what I do. All right. We have a vote to approve the meeting for tonight, the agenda. Oh, I second it, but I'll, okay, it's me and Tom. Bruce, it's a tie. Yeah, I have Bruce and Tom. Karen, how do you vote? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, with the Those three you added would be great, yeah. Karen cut out for some reason. I know. Okay, so here. All right, it's unanimous. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right, let's go to item number three 18 Orchard Court tree request. Hmm. One that re needs a discussion right off the bat. Okay. <laughs> everybody, did everybody get a look at these? I did not look at these. Okay, well, they seem to be healthy. The tree tree report says they're medium risk and healthy, and they're not right next to the three that are going to be removed below them. So, uh, what do people feel about that? Well, it seems to me they were concerned about the wind loading these trees were going to see after the other three are removed. Mm. I'd be more concerned if they were a closer grouping, but they're already somewhat separated. So, um, yeah, I'm not really sure. You're playing yeah, on I, people. I didn't. I wondered why north winds were such an issue. Usually, the winter winds are so it's, the bad winter winds are out of the south. Aren't out they? of the south, yeah. I, I just have a hard time going against a arborist report that recommends removing them. Yeah, this is a moderate risk. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I'm, I'm beginning to, to wonder if there's a something that goes on when an arborist shows up at someone's house and the person really wants something to happen and the arborist starts to maybe want to say yes. That's a possibility. I don't know. I mean, it is money in their pocket. And it's just also your face to face with someone, you know, maybe they're a nice person. I've, I've experienced this as an ACC member showing up at somebody's house. And at first I think, oh no, God, that's terrible. And then that person is sweet and really nice and, and friendly. And, and I start to, to change my vote, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm agree in agreement with Tom. You get an arborist report. I kind of want to go along with it because I don't know trees as well as an arborist would. So anytime I see that, I'm more thinking that uh, in agreement with their request. It just seems kind of like internally inconsistent when they say the risk is moderate. That that you know that applies to probably half or more of our trees. I don't know what brown cedar pocket rod is, but it doesn't sound good. That's not these trees. That's at the downslope three, oh, right? That's a lower back. No, this is tree number two. Ooh, yeah. Or maybe it it's in their mitigation op um, options. Well, you know, whenever we're in doubt, we always ask for an arborist report. So, yeah. and we got it. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. So, we, we could approve and require replanting. Sure can. Yeah, let's do that because they're going to, unfortunately, it will, we lose the sponge here for a few years to pull the water up. Uh, so it's all going to go to that lower house, but I guess that's, they're the ones asking for it, I guess. Um, what kind of trees would you like them to replant? 
Uh, can we get a motion first for that? Uh, I move to approve with replanting two to one on the removal because usually half of them die and some native species. Western red cedar, same thing they're taking out? Red cedar, or if they're afraid of the, if there's any disease in the soil, maybe go to uh, Douglas fir. Douglas fir. Either, yeah. either, I'm good with that. Either, either one would be fine, let them pick. Okay. Can I get a second for the I'll second. Thank you, John. All in favor? With comments? Aye. Unanimous? Without the uh, arbitrary, uh, Without the report, the report though, I would have voted against this one. Yes, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. All right, item number 3.1, 20 Morning Beach Drive, tree request. Those are sick. I, I move to approve. I'll second it, they're high risk. Uh, remove, uh, but replace with one-to-one -one maybe? Yeah. Yeah. It's a tight grouping. They don't need one. Favor with Karen's comments? Yes. Same thing for, for our cedar, whichever they want. We're, we're approving the removal of all three. They have only one tree removal marked on the request. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting. Yeah, they got three in the Herbis report. <laughs> yeah. No, they, it's no. a grouping of three in there. They're all disease, so you all need to go. So approve removal of three trees. Replant. How many? One to one, you said? One to three. one. Yeah. Yeah, but probably the same thing as what Bruce suggested is um, Douglas fir or cedar if there's rot in the ground. All right, all in favor with the comments? I think we already voted. Unanimous? All right, item number 3.3, 52 Morning Glory Drive. Tree request. Did they even, well, did they even have to submit these? These are all tiny are trees, jumping? pretty much. Are we jumping Shetland Court, or are you going to, are you, do you mean Shetland Court? Yeah, Shetland Court. Oh, excuse me. Yep, Shetland Court. Okay. I move to approve. I Hopefully they add, uh, it looked like there's a note there where they came in and added the one, uh, I forget what, what type of conifer it was, but we told them that it didn't need to get removed. It was damaged and it was dying back already. And it was probably less probably small enough to where they didn't need to get the county in there, but they're going to have to get the county in there for for the alder. Those are above the uh, the size limit on that. The oh, yeah. did, did we have to do the other two subject to county permit? Oh, yeah. That's two alders, correct? Yeah, the alders are going to need the request and the uh, and then the uh, I think all of the conifers are below the uh, yeah the, the tiny. tree size. The one alder, yeah. the twelve-inch alder, they're listing as dead. Do they need a permit for that one? Uh, according to the county, they do. Plus, they have a ten-inch one. That's doesn't live. Doesn't make any sense to me. I do believe the county allows imminent hazard removals, though, with a retroactive permit. So they yeah. can choose to do that. But they still need to get the permit for it eventually, though. They just right. need to take pictures and uh, yeah, and the stump yeah. so they can check it. You might as well just apply for all of them at once. Yeah, might as well. Those are the only two they need to to apply for, right? The twenty-four inch you just found a limb. Yeah, I think everything else is below the. Uh, yeah. And as uh, Karen said, yeah, we were supposed to do the require uh, permits on the previous two because they're way above the uh, the substantial tree size. Gotcha. Can we add those on, Susie? 
those that comment to the first two? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we all. Okay, all in favor with comments? Can we uh, add the comment to replant some? Because they don't, they'll have a pretty bare slope there. You can. You're leaving all the large overstory though, so. It sounded like these were just under trees. Most of that yeah, was just the trash coming out. They didn't have a lot of trees there though. No, this was the one that had the, they're taking out a whole, they're, I'm sure they had a number of large overstory trees that they were leaving in, the way I remember it. Because I know that one uh, damaged conifer. Are you sure you're thinking of the right spot? Yeah, this that, is the one that had that long list of us. Uh, yeah. The 20 trees. Yeah, it yeah. seemed to me their slope was it mostly of, mostly just these trees. Here, they actually they included a little uh, site plan. And of course, it's not there. There's going to be a reason all these things are dead. Are they not getting sunlight and water? Let's well, yeah, A lot of them are just those small understory things that are growing up underneath the uh, larger canopy. But on the lot itself, there are not that don't it doesn't show that many trees on on this uh, item no, three. The trees are all along that outside edge. Yeah. Which is a sudden, partly Sun Valley land. If you look at their little uh, item 3.2.3, .3, that page. Yeah. The map? Yeah. On the lot, there's not all that much. And that's my memory anyway. And it's a fairly steep downslope. I'm just wondering if the larger trees are going to remain, if it's going to be worth their while to replant. Definitely not 20 trees, maybe 25%. I wouldn't want to underplant the existing uh, large conifer, but maybe in the lower area where they're removing most of it. But even yeah. though there's going to be some remaining, so. Between the house and the bunch at the bottom, there's a big open area. So Bridge, you suggesting replant one or? Replant a handful. I was going to say four. That's fine. There you go. Four total trees for the entire lot. That would work. Just don't plant underneath the large canopy, though. I yeah, mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> All in favor of replanting four trees is our comment. Yeah. Aye. All right, Susie, that's passed unanimous with the comments of replanting four trees. Yep. And what, what trees did you want? And they need to get county permit on the two, the 10 and the 12 alders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They're removing a lot of alder. They can plant any kind of tree they want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Like the whole thing, huh? Yeah. And Susie, I should have asked you, do we have anyone attending tonight? Um, we have two attendees. They are both builders. We, um, we have John Gordon here and Paul Hollander. All right, uh, Joel, I think we should move on to you. I assume you're uh, going to be representing both. I don't know. Are either one of us one of our new constructions? Yeah, let's move on to the new construction. I think we should get that out of the way quickly, hopefully. Sure. I think we can dispose of the last tree request pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Megan, I'm sorry. Megan. Give me two morning glory tree request. I have three points. Yeah. I move they can get rid of the plum tree. <laughs> yeah. I, I, couldn't, I spent 15 minutes trying to figure out how they were running into it until he came outside and said it was the overhanging branches. Tell me what on. But, I'm yeah. sorry, tell me what the DBH is on that because the breast height there, it's split into like many, many uh, tops. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with Bruce. <laughs> Move the proof. I'm, I'm sorry, Jim. Okay, go ahead. All right. <laughs> um, All in favor, Pat? Unanimous? 
Okay. All right, guys. Now we can move on to new construction. And Joel, I'll let you take that. All right. We'll start with uh, 77. No, sorry. We'll start with uh, three Winter Creek Place is up first. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, three, am I muted? Three Winter Creek Place. There we go. Three Winter Creek. We have Paul Hollander here, who's our, our builder. And uh, I do have a report on this. I don't think it made it into the Google Drive. I was still waiting on a, uh, a couple of things. For that minute, but Can you folks hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we do have uh, lots going on here. <clears throat> lots of things have been have been fixed. Some of the bigger issues. Uh, we have started off with a little bit of combination hand drawn and um, plans, and they're all uh, computer drawn now, with the exception of the landscaping plan, which so is okay with me. Uh, um, going through some of the comments here, uh, we have a comment about the paint colors. So I think uh, I did get confirmation today from Paul that they are gonna do go to Winchester Gray. This is an approved, a pre-approved paint color for the body instead of that deep sea dive green. And then uh, the, the only other thing with the paints is that uh, he is proposing a black trim color. Uh, that's the black that's in the spec sheet. Replace this deep sea dive with that gray and then uh, black trim color. Um, so that would need okay. that would need your approval. Yep. You just wiped out my one comment. <laughs> do we want to do? Do you want to discuss the 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 black now? Because our, our so our our normal our new paint and I can I'm happy to send this to you. Uh, I sent this to I believe I sent this to Paul. Our body colors that were approved I put them together in, in one PDF here. So here's the Winchester gray, and then we've got uh, our trim colors are on this sheet, kind of, and I don't know what they look like on your screen. They're they're lighter colors, so black would go. Uh, in, in place of that. Is it Westchester Gray? Westchester Gray. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Westchester Gray, that's pre-approved. Yeah. Do we want to do we want to approve this black trim color? Is the big yeah. question. Did he say, oh, is the garage going to be black? From the sheet here? Uh, the, uh, he has proposed garage door and front door as black of night. Um, that's that's uh, not quite correct. It, I, the, if, if I can speak. Sure. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Uh, so the, the black is an accent. And most of the tone uh, on everything is going to be the that the body color, and so very light use of the black. So, for instance, like on the barge and the freeze, it's just going to be the freeze. Uh, on the garage door, it would be where there's lights. It's just going to be it's going to be black accent. Uh, the windows will be uh, like a black uh, vinyl, um, and so yeah. Uh, there will be a lot of actual tones, like uh, even the corner boards of the house will be the same as the body color. A lot of tone on tone going on with black accents. 
So if you can, if you can all visualize that light use of black trim or, or accents, so you could, but not heavy use of black as trim. So for instance, the corner boards, that, that'll be all be the body color. Um, like up in the, if you look at the, the uh, fascia and the barge there, that'll be um, all the body color as well with only the freeze board and the, the trim, the drip edge being black. So uh, very light use of black as an accent. Some would call it a trim, other people would call it an accent. Um, but yeah, the, the door uh, will probably be a bit light. I'm looking for modern type of options, but black as being a uh, like an accent, not being necessarily the focus. Keeping with a very modern house here, we're going to accent it with modern uh, windows and modern garage door and modern opening door, front door. Does that make sense to all you uh, members, board members? Yeah, I was a little bit confused on the body color. Your submittal has a kind of a greenish blue. Uh, okay, so that's been amended. That uh, that deep sea dive has been amended to the Winchester gray. Okay, okay. And the, the, the garage door will be what color? Uh, the garage door is going to be a Winchester gray with black accents. Okay, that makes sense. It, not too busy looking. Not not too busy looking. I I noticed there was a there was a I think on Deer Creek uh, today I was driving on that. There's a beautiful new house that's got kind of like what I'm envisioning with black accents. It's got black um, uh, deck railing, um, black most of the lights. That, that was a a lighted uh, garage door there. Very nice. This particular garage door I'm I'm thinking of, of will have lights across the top and then down one side oh I mean windows some people call them light yeah uh, builder term light on on the actual garage door mm -hmm. what will be the colors so what you see on the garage door in dark uh that'll be those will be like a, 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 a frosted glass. Hmm. Yeah. Everything else, the body. So color? we're talking the frosted glass and then trim. Yeah, frosted glass, and then the then the other six squares. Those those types of squares being uh, body color, and then the black being the accent that would connect it all. So each each panel framed in black. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, yeah. That will that, look uh, interesting. On uh, Windward Drive, that beautiful Windward Drive, I think they painted their garage door with uh, all the uh, panels uh, surrounded in a, in a different shade of blue. You remember the two shades of blue? Where the, the panels were all light blue, I think, and then around, each panel was surrounded by you know, where the black here is proposed was a darker blue. I don't know if you guys yeah. remember that house. With the lights on this, wouldn't this be more like the one that's on North Point, that newer one? That looked I, like I, a glass with a, and that was black, essentially black metal, it looked like. So with each panel mm -hmm. outlined in a different color than the the inside is that they were black and then it was a dark uh smoke glass on the things i not sure if it had any painted panels on there so yeah it doesn't sound like you guys are remembering the windward drive i think it's 34 windward drive oh we definitely remember that one i mean okay uh, that's a different color combination anyway yeah. 
Yeah. That color combination. <laughs> this, I think, will be a lot more subtle. So. Okay. It looked a little busy to me, but it's okay. I don't, I don't care that much. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll look very nice, but uh, that's my opinion. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Okay. You guys want to make a motion on the approval of the paint? I move to approve. <laughs> Do we have to approve Second. the paint? Usually not separately, but since we're in there and it's a it's a change for the original thing, let's just get it done. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Unanimous, Susie. Okay. All right. Thanks. Good. All right. Let's move on here. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, comments missing floor plans. So we we did have a full set of plans submitted, including floor and and uh, the roofing plan as these plans got sent back to the builder for revisions. Um, we we're just revising the elevations and the site plan so they didn't change any of any of the floor plans or roofing layouts. And as they're making those revisions, they're just sending back the, uh, the elevations and the site plan. So we received those separately. So I didn't yeah, I recall our having had access to those yeah, I don't think I originally put them in the in the Google Drive because, I mean, normally we're not really concerned with the, the floor plan too much. Um, yeah, the roof plan is how you calculate the lot coverage, right? Right, right. And so I, I have those documents and, and we can measure the eaves of the roof. Um, okay. Yeah, the ones I had uh, and looked at didn't have the roof elevation. I see that's on this one. Yeah, and uh, and uh, yeah, another thing that we had to come back with was we had uh, two elevations that that came back, and we had a request for the other the other two. So there was a while where there was two. Well, there was two different sets of elevations. There was the front, I think, the front and the rear, and then uh, the original elevation plan. So they looked different, and we were waiting on the others uh, to come back. But I think they're all here now. And in in the drive, let's see. But uh, if they're not, certainly I we can put the put the roof plans up there. So the original plans are here. We've got floor plan, roof. It was a complicated shape. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Quite a bit of work to calculate the lot coverage. Well, it's not too bad at the roof. You just take a bunch of squares. But uh, but we do have those. If you want to look at those, I'm happy to happy to provide them. Uh, yeah, I think my only comment on this one was when I looked at the driveway. Um, it, it had different elevations. One side of the driveway had a different mm -hmm. elevation and the other and different slopes on each side. Now that could be due to a steep street. Is the driveway really twisted? Yeah, so I believe that's because the driveway is sloped here. And so we're sloping the driveway to drain, to drain uh, storm water this direction. So we have a uh, section from this side and a section from this side. And because of that slope, uh, those sections appear appear different. Does that, does that make sense? That's actually fairly typical. The, the street usually has a slope, mm -hmm. and uh, you rarely want your uh, driveway to be sloped as it gets in front of your garage. So mm -hmm. that's typically there's a bit of a twist that happens in most of the driveways. Mm -hmm. The other people have all been submitting centerline uh, profiles. Right, and so that twist is reflected. That's that's why they look different. Yeah, that answers my question. I figured that's what it had to be something like that. Okay. Uh, let's move on here. Uh, next one. Uh, is there enough soil depth to install the stormwater treatment trench? Soil logs show depth to restrictive layer bedrock of 21 inches. Um, so this is something from the the memorandum or the memorandum agreement with the county where we are 
where uh, SBCA is looking at the landscaping plans, and, and this came from there too in that same, on that same page, SVC, SVCA is not intended to review or approve the residential stormwater system designs. Um, so I don't know how, it's, it's beyond the scope of my inspections to, I don't know, to determine that soil depth. That's my, my perspective on that. Um, Yeah, I would agree with you, Joel. The county uh, inspects the stormwater system and design and approves it such. Uh, mm -hmm. We're more interested in tree preservation and uh, erosion control and things like that is what we're going to look at. Probably a little more intimate than uh, the county does. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay, and that leads us to my next uh, next comment, uh, which which does have a, a little bit of merit, but again, it has to do with the stormwater system. So normally a stormwater, uh, the uh, outflow is about four feet below, below grade. In this case, we have approximately the same grade, I think only about one foot higher than the ditch. So just making sure we wanna make sure that stormwater flows into the ditch um, on the site plan. That's here. So the elevation, of where that lower pipe is coming out. Um, Does it daylight? That's the question. Yeah. So if I could say something to that. Paul, can you address that? Yeah, I can. So that that is really the tail that uh, wags the dog there on that uh, that particular, that maintaining flow on, on this uh, system. And so I do have room to, if I need to, is to bring the plan up to uh, 470 uh, and I will still have uh, room left on the other side of my rock wall. If I need to make that, that rock wall that you see on the other side over there, uh -huh. if, that needs to, if that needs to be tiered into uh, like two rock walls, uh, I can do that. Uh, as well, I mean, making sure to maintain that 20 feet um, from the, the corner of the house to, in terms of the height of the house, not getting that. So uh, I do have room to, to come up a, a foot. And originally that's before I changed all the elevations and lowered it. It, it was at the finished floor, was at 471 excuse me 470 i think it it was um so i do have uh some room to to go up and and still meet that requirement on on the not max not the house not being higher than uh, uh 20 feet for, uh, on definition two does that make sense for everybody did i make uh, was i clear yeah i understand what you're saying mm -hmm. Yeah, we're currently not talking about the, the structure height. Okay. Um, no, that's, he's saying that's the trade-off. You'd have to raise yeah. the house in order to, if you can't get daylight out of the pipe at the back end. There yeah, you I go, think, exactly. I personally think they're three, four feet away from being able to daylight. Um, I, I don't know, but um, you know, I don't think a few inches is going to change anything. Um, you know, if if we're not commenting on the designs, the stormwater designs, I understand that we're not supposed to inspect. Um, we do inspect the stormwater uh, trench as it's been, after it's been dug out, and excavated and, and county inspects it as well. Yeah, I guess in our memorandum of agreement, we, we were not required to inspect those. Mm. But but if something like this does affect the height of the house, so because if you can't get the thing to daylight out one side, you're you've got an option of either relocating it or raising the house. Well, his house is already right at the max, and the only way to do that is to relandscape the front there to raise the uh, level of the ground in order to allow him to raise the house. So those are the trade-offs. It's so it's either daylighting where he's got it or run it out the back somehow instead of out the front or uh, raise the house and landscape it so that he's got a higher hill in front. 
Yeah, I think that uh, you'd have to raise the house so high, it would be ridiculous. It should have been designed out the back to go out the back. Um, this is not the first time I've seen a problem with the stormwater designs here. No. Uh, maybe we need to take it up with the county at some, at some point. Yeah, at some point. Can we get a motion on this comment? Well, I, I think we can set it aside for now. Keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. Uh, I don't. I really don't see how this is going to work. <laughs> I think on this comment, uh, if he if it can't work the way it is, uh, he's going to have to rework with the county on what will work and. Uh, and then before he starts on that, it's it, that's going to be a change. It's going to have to come back to us. So, Very good. And if we're going to have to change it, it it's going to change all his elevations. Yeah. So that could be the problem at that point. But uh, we need to. We should be looking at it as submitted, in my opinion. So uh, correct. If something comes up later, that's could be a problem later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if it is moved, if it doesn't need to be moved, or elevations need to change, any any alterations. At what point does that stormwater trench and get dug? Does that get dug with the foundation digging? I mean, when are we going to realize this is a problem? And it's not going to work. I think it can, it can, there's no, my guess is, you know, near the end, because you want to have your gutters in place and your drain lines in place is my, is my guess. So after the structure is built, <laughs> that starts to get addressed. And if the stormwater system doesn't work at that point, it's a little late to raise the house. Mm -hmm. They'll have to go back to the. There are really companies that will do that. The house is the answer. They have to. They yeah. have so so much of a fail here. They would have to put the whole system in the back. Mm -hmm. So has the county had no comments on this? Uh, Paul, I know so that the the original elevation was at. Uh, Let's see. Uh, take a, take a look at what our original elevation was before it, we we dropped it with uh, the the engineer. So the original elevate elevation uh, was finished floor height was at four seventy one. Uh, grade line was at at the front of the house was at uh, four seventy. We moved it. Um, down to both being at making it a, a just a, a level garage and, and finished floor um, at 460, basically 469. So um, that was that was one of the when Joel raised his concern about the height of the house. Uh, being too high uh, with the definition of what's looking at definition two. That was my engineer's solution was to uh, uh, lower it one foot. Um, but he may have not, um, I've been trying to connect with him today. He may have not um, um, with the, had an oversight there on, on his own design on the storm water. Um, in terms of fall there. So uh, I'm willing to, to look at it uh, again with him. I am confident though, if we do move it up, there is still uh, plenty of height on the corner of that lot that I can use to make my, um, my definition two of the, the house height being at 20. If you look at the contour lines in the very corner there, if that, uh, it's leveled out by it. You'll see that that's at four, 470, um, six, 475. Uh, all we needed um, on our on our 
because our roof height is, I think, at, at 94. All we needed was the 474 uh, right there. If I just lift up that, that uh, level that out, that corner, the whole corner with some, some more rockery, um, creative, even maybe even tearing, tearing it, I, I, can, I can go back to the original um, foundation, or excuse me, of um, grade there, at, at bring that back up, um, and then is the finished floor height to, to match it. So I am very confident that I can work this out with my engineer, and we do have um, the type of lot that I can play with the grade a little bit. He thought we could uh, play with the grade down. Uh, that leads to the problem as somebody here in this group is, is uh, astutely seen. I have the same concern. I'm not poo-pooing it. Um, so if we need to bring it up, we will bring it up. Yeah. In that case, like I move to defer until we see something else. It looks like one foot isn't going to do it to me. Can we put this off for a week? Can you get this resolved in a week? I can get it resolved in a week. Yep. Can I get a second on that? Second. Do, do we want to go through the other comments too? or? We do, we do. But we wanted to get that comment deferred and we'll move on to the next. Okay. 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 Uh, please show the proposed locations of all utility lines, including power and phone or cable, if applicable. Um, uh, please show on the landscape plan an outline separating areas of existing vegetation where it's going to be left undisturbed. Um, so on your landscape plan here, showing where we've got you know, what areas are to be existing native vegetation? Where is it going to be landscaping? Where is it going to be replanted? Okay. Did native vegetation? Are you able to look at the the color uh, landscape plan that I I turned uh, in? I thought that I got I had a uh, another sheet that that showed that I I have. Turn, there we go. Uh, no, one, one more. There. One more. Is there one more? I don't know if I did. You have a did? I don't know if I had a digital one with that. Maybe it's. Uh, it's on the two. It would be on the two sheets that I turned in. I thought I turned in a digital one, but um, it looks. Uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, mm -hmm. There you go. That's that's one of the. You can see in the light green. The, the light green is the area, um, the lime green is the area that I'm allowed. That's the 610 feet um, on the plan that I turned in. Uh, there is no lime green around the sides of the house. Every, the, all the lime green is, that's the area, yep. And so all the, all the areas around the sides of the house is, have been removed. That that is all natural vegetation. The only the only uh, unnatural vegetation would be uh, surrounding the driveway in, in the front of the house. Okay, so you'll you'll replant native plants in the areas that you dig up. You won't leave it as just a vast array of mulch. Uh, nope. I don't, I, I, the, are you speaking uh, in the, the front of the house or the sides? The sides and rear. Mm -hmm. Sides and rear. I, I plan to, uh, um, be, before, uh, I'm going to dig up as many ferns as I can and save as much as I can. I don't know how that, well they'll, they'll do with transplant plant, but no, I, I absolutely uh, believe in, uh, the, the beauty of natural vegetation and I'm ex excited to try and save as much of it as possible. I'm looking forward to your unnatural veg vegetation that you mentioned though. You <laughs> it's kind of a weird term. 
native, 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 native and non-native. Non-native. There you go. Yeah, I have tried <laughs> digging up some firms, ferns, and moving them, and I wasn't successful. But I really suck at plants, so. And my wife does it all the time. She always has good luck. So yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just me. I kill everything <laughs> I touch. So we are charged with making sure that native education gets replanted um, in all the areas outside of the stormwater design uh, square footage. There's that it not be left just as mulch. Uh, we have native plants. So if you have to buy them, um, you know, that they're, they're, they're there being native plant vegetation planted back. Um, the county has a spreadsheet tool they've made available to, to kind of count, calculate how many trees, how many shrubs, how many ground covers per square foot. Um, that's kind of what we're looking for, I think. So if the ferns you dig up aren't enough, then we'd want to see plants anyway, you know, buy some. <laughs> Well, I I uh, agree with everything you said. I uh, I like native uh, vegetations. I uh, love the the look of uh, the the lot as it is, and I'm not looking to turn it into a parking lot or mulch or anything like that. So um, you are free to look at my handiwork after I'm finished. And if you don't like it, I'll cer- will certainly um, pl- plant some more. Mm-hmm. Somebody's cat has an opinion here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> don't you want to talk to some of our other builders, too, about planting more if we don't like it? <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, nice offer anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, That's Joel's job, not ours at that point. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll make sure there's replanted native vegetation. You know, I, in my conversation with Michael Pearson at the county, he said they do, uh, they are making, trying to make sure that there is replanted, uh, replanting going on as well. So I know that he's not leaving it all just up to us. Um, all right. It is our job, I guess, according to that agreement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our policy requires tree barriers. Yeah, well, I think we had this conversation. Um, and so this this isn't something you need to show on your site plan, but uh, we will do this on our erosion control inspection. We come out making sure we have tree barriers, uh, you know, the orange kind of mesh fencing uh, at the drip line of each, well, you don't need to go around every tree, but trees that uh, are close enough to be subject to damage. And I uh, went out here today and talked to this neighbor above, and she has two, she has a couple big cedar trees here, kind of around the, uh, near the right of her home. And uh, she has some concerns about them. So I went out and I stood on the property corner and shot a laser to the tree and measured it about 22 feet away and uh, took quite a few steps to get under the, under the drip line. So I think they'll be okay, uh, but we wanna make sure that we have that uh, fencing, you know, extending from the na- those neighbor's trees wherever they, uh, wherever they are. Just to follow the drip line if it encroaches onto this property? Well, yeah, we don't want, mm, if it's encroaching onto, onto lot five here, we'll have those, those drip lines in place. So that neighbor made that comment. I assured her we'll protect those trees for her. I don't think they're close enough to be in danger. I met the neighbor today and, and had the same discussion with her. She uh, <laughs> mentioned that you were there and I and I we, we went and walked and looked at it together and, and I really see no problem there with those, those two trees in the corner yeah. of the house at all. Yeah, I think you'll be fine. You'd have to be pretty pretty careless with your digging, I think, to to hit them. Well, it's not the trunk we're worried about; it's the roots. Right. Um, so when you're digging, if you see a lot of large mm-hmm. roots, 
then please don't just cover it up again like some of the other builders do. And then last, last oh, year, this year. Well, there should be really large roots. I think he's far enough away, 22 feet. Uh, 15 feet yeah. is kind of the what we talked to Christopher as a kind of a, a rule of thumb was a good good distance away. So seven more feet on that is I thought was yeah. pretty safe. And downhill that slope, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about as long as yeah. you don't pile a bunch of dirt on it, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Uh, we be able All right, uh, next up, uh, if there is a tree to be removed, oh, uh, these trees, I think, uh, these trees on the on the right side of the lot here, some of them that are not proposed to be removed, uh, I think, but I, I went out there today and I did see, I think some of these were flagged, the maple, uh, this cedar. Yeah. Uh, so because yeah, you're building think... a propane tank there, those are probably going to be requested to be removed. Yeah. That's, that's what our comment says here. And then if they are to be removed, uh, then replanting. Do we want to have replanting? I was thinking just one tree. Mm -hmm. He was leaving that big leaf maple on the corner, the way I understood it. So yeah, if you, one would be plenty up in there. Yeah, because of the utilities are there, the power and the something else, maybe that won't do so well either. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can take out that maple if you want, but I it, I don't have a, a problem with the 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 maple there. It's it's not the doing any. The maple does a good job of snapping back when hurt. So uh, yeah, if you want to leave that as an established tree, that's fine with me. Yeah, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm happy with that maple there, and and there there's a couple smaller ones. I think there might be just uh, on either side of it that that sort of need to go, um, that aren't that aren't doing very well. Um, but the the larger one um, is is good in my opinion. It needs it should it should stay. I like it. You're not going to trench your power line right through it. <laughs> Well, we'll have to have to have to go around. Yeah, we'll have to get get. It. But if 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 we uh, end up de just destroying it, the yeah, we we can do another uh, a, a tree to replace it for sure. That's that's going to be kind of a a landscape corner all beyond that rock wall. Anyhow, what's I mean, the routing on the power and phone lines? I was going to go over. Like real, real close to the the property, keeping sort of at right angles, but uh, and and then and then towards um, there's if you look at the I'm not sure my my directions here. I wish this map had a north south on it, um, but at the bottom of the page, that property line there uh -huh. uh, is moving moving the things along that property line and then at a right angle coming into. Okay, all right. Um, You're just not gonna do a diagonal. And no, I am not in favor of doing things in diagonal. I, I, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, like better, to, better to run things at right angles. Okay. Uh, Joel. Yes. Comment number nine. I didn't didn't say anything about replanting. I think if they remove that tree, they mm -hmm. will need to put a little bit of a rockery in there because it's like a couple of feet down, vertical, where one of the roots is. So you know, is this, this is this cedar, this twenty one cedar in the back. Yeah, and it's that slope that's that shown right there on the on the topography there. Yeah. There's a mini cliff right there that the mm -hmm. tree created. So uh, like a little rockery or something, just real small, but enough to keep it from, because that is a natural drainage and will have a lot of water running through it. Yeah. It looks mm -hmm. like yeah. 
without something, it's going to continue to eat uphill toward his house. So it'd be nice to contain that. Mm -hmm. So currently it is proposed to remain. And then, you know, you have this deck here, which. Uh, yeah, I can't see that really interfering with. Well, the I think that's, that's actually, proposed to remain. actually hang on that the, the house seems to have been moved back a couple of feet. Cor this, correct, this one, one foot. It's moved one foot closer to that uh, tree, and so that tr that tree uh, should really go. Right. The actual site plan doesn't match this. This. Okay. Uh, whatever it is. Gotcha. Uh, wait, are you talking? So I have the comments on here. A the twenty-two inch cedar in the deck location is currently functioning. So that's this on the original plans. And I don't, I don't think you've, I don't know if <laughs> the original plans to look at, but it's this, this is the 22 seater. And this is the 20 yeah. seater here. Right. So are we talking about which one? We're talking about the 22 seater. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it is proposed for removal. So if this one is coming out, we want to replant as well. No, we want to have a little retaining wall there. Where That's not the replanting so much as the roots are holding up the erosion going down that uh, gully there. Okay. Where where the it's an erosion all control numbers are. Yeah. Where oh, all the elevation sure. numbers are. Okay. Please share like the wall, Rockery. Oh yeah, I know I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Mm. And uh, at the top of it, those contour lines are actually should be right on top of each other because there was a little drop off there where the root was. So it is. <laughs> So May I make a comment? So, oh. I, I agree. I agree. We can, we can, uh, in the, in the gully there. There, we can, we can stabilize the, the, the. We might have to do it in a couple steps or something like that, but uh, mm -hmm. help, help keep the gully there from uh, getting any deeper. I, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea. Um. Uh, I, I would also comment on that 21 inch uh, cedar. How much uh, closer does, I mean, in, in Sudden Valley, do we, we allow trees to be to, um, like you see the, see the roof there. Uh, it, it is, that one is very, very, and I don't really know why that one is not slated for removal because that is very close. Well, if there were a fence, we would require you to stay five feet away from it with your fence posts. Mm -hmm. so are we just looking at some corner posts for your deck? Mm -hmm. It could be all right. Maybe play that one by ear. I don't know. You're you're saying that uh, that 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 twenty one inch uh, absolutely has to stay, regardless how uh, if close it is to my. Um, deck and uh, and Eve. Let's just oh. say if you had a circle and a line through it, nobody would say anything about it. It's yeah. just we just want that the uh, make sure you do something for the erosion. Okay, because uh, I've got a I've got a got a yellow tape around that one right now. Okay. That, mean, that means removal. Yeah. All right. We're, we're, I'm okay with that. All right, I think we're almost done here. Oh yeah, and then the last one was about the color, but well, let's let's. Uh, are we all in approval on his uh, landscape adjustments, comments addressed? Want to make a motion on that? The only thing on the landscaping that I've got is, uh, I think he already realizes that uh, Japanese knotweed does not count as native vegetation, <laughs> so that's going to be the hardest on this one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's mowed down right now, so it's uh, it's it's uh, step one and being addressed right now. <laughs> that is not going to be an easy fix. No, I've had I've I've done that battle before. It seems like we resolved most everything except the stormwater and the house elevation. Yeah. Yeah. Which is one so of the same. 
So that's the only thing we have to look at uh, in a week uh, if uh, we continue finish the deferral. Then that's all. That's the thing holding us up. Yep. Okay. All right. Can I get a motion? Move to defer till next week and see this one problem resolved or two problems. Mm -hmm. one you want problem. that motion? And to approve with the exception of the two comments. Well, we're going to have to, we can't really approve until we get this resolved. Okay. This yeah. could change things. If you have to start move plus messing with the elevation, that can change a lot of things a little bit. <laughs> An awful lot. Yeah. So I think we stick with the deferral. Hopefully we'll have an answer by next week. Or okay. soon so that we can review it. Can I get a second on that motion? Second. All in favor of deferral? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Well, thank All you, right. everybody. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to leave the meeting. And thank you, Paul, for working with us. All right, we're going to get to our uh, item number four, six birdie lane, fence request. Uh, Will we do the rest of the new constructions, or we're going to wait, wait, or do we? No, we're, uh, no. The other new what? What other new constructions do you have, Joel? Oh, well, we have the well, their whole business, the uh, seventy-seven Valley Crest and 49 Louise View Drive, but I think we deferred that one already. So just 77 Valley Crest is, is the... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I don't... Uh, for that one? John Gordon? Sorry? Do we you... have a representative for that one? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we told him last week that we would talk about it this week, so... So you say everything has been resolved on this, though, Joe? Yes, all the, the ACC comments have been addressed. We had, uh, let's see. Get my report here. Good grief. So here were the comments for the deferral. Uh, construction activities, so previously our, our drip line, sorry, our uh, stormwater has been routed. Uh, previously, here's a look. Here's the location of stormwater previously cutting through all these trees and now it has been moved. To run okay. straight down to the ditch. This is the one where they want to use the sump pump? Correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and there then, wasn't uh, I wish there was the another alternative. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, comment two, complete the incomplete clearly clearing limits line. So previously showing clearing boundary came up here and terminated now they've got it uh, going all the way all the way around here so that's been taken care of uh, please show how explain the downspouts we routed into the stormwater at the lower end of the home so we do have a sump pump proposed Can I make a comment about that? Please. Who are we hearing from? <laughs> it, can I make a comment? Oh, John? John? Okay. Yeah. Um, the sump pump is there as a last resort. Um, downspouts on that side are kind of elevated above 
and if he can, he'll he'll route them down and under the subfloor and out the front into the into the stormwater system. But if he has to, we'll use this sump pump. That's so that's kind of a backup. Yeah, I mean it's there. You you wanted to know how how that how the downspouts on the east side are going to be handled, and that's uh, you know the way it'll be handled unless he can find a better solution. I, I just think a sump pump on a stormwater system is a really bad idea. That that's a failure waiting to happen. Yeah, but uh, I think. Anyway, I'll, this is off topic, so I shouldn't, shouldn't waste our time, our, uh, an evening meeting talking about stuff that's off topic. Yeah, this is true. Well, I'd, happy, I'd be happy to see his alternative, uh, but until then, he at least meets the... Could he put the... I mean, I would love to see that stormwater system down lower towards the uh, right side in the page and a pipe from the driveway being longer. Uh, longer. Yeah. And just put that system down as far down as you can and still have the, the four feet, you know, the one foot cover and the three foot depth and have it go flow downhill to the ditch. But I think you can move it quite a bit further down and have a long pipe from the driveway. Trench drain there, or strip drain. And then that would help with all those trees a lot. Well, most of them. <laughs> I, I think the uh, builder would be happy with that if uh, the, the stormwater designer is. I don't know if it can be moved down far enough to catch all the downspouts, but that would be a bonus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really would, but we. They have resolved our issue with the sump pump, so we have to kind of stick with that unless they are w willing to do something else. I just, I just don't want to see a sump pump in a stormwater system. Because yeah. when that sump pump fails, what are they going to do with their water? They'll daylight it all. Uh, I would ask that the committee um, put that recommendation in the approval letter uh, to make sure that it. Uh, Builders aware of it. Yeah. If possible, move it down. Yeah. I that sounds good to me. Uh, who wants to word that for Susie? I'll do it. All right, ready to, <laughs> to the next. Uh, land plan. We reconcile the canopy plan. So we do have plant species, spacing, and clearing limits defined. Well, actually, sorry, we don't have we don't have spacing. We do have we have spacing on 49 Louise View. Right. I copy paste. I think I copy pasted that comment. <laughs> we don't have spacing, but we do have we do have species. Uh, we do have them on on the landscaping plan with the clearing boundary. Do we really need to show a spacing, or just make sure they meet the minimum requirement? Yeah, I think they need to meet the. You know, I'd be okay with if they meet with the county. Uh, to use the county spreadsheet for a number of, of plants mm -hmm. for now. Um, and that, you know, they not have big expanses of bare uh, mulch. Mm -hmm. They put, you know, plants. They have plants uh, in, my, in my conversation with the county, that's what the county is, is looking for is um, those native species and not just a big mulch patch. Um, So uh, it would be, be good to work towards where they show, especially for the ground covers, but maybe we can come up with a minimum spacing too. 
mm -hmm. or sorry, a maximum spacing given, you know, for week each plant. <clears throat> so anyway, they're only showing at the front. Um, they should at least explain that they should show where their, their non-native area is mm -hmm. marked with the square footage that the designer allows them. And mm -hmm. then everything else, native plants. That's what I'm. That's what I'm communicating with uh, with the builders moving forward on landscaping plans. I I believe the canopy plan is pretty clear on the limitation yeah. to to landscaping, and with all those trees remaining, there should be little need for native vegetation or planting in the native vegetation area. That's how I interpreted this. No, there should be both trees and ground covers. Um, the trees by themselves don't do the, all the work. The, the county spreadsheet has trees plus ground covers plus shrubs. They, they have different options, but no option is just trees. Well, I'm just, the, the existing trees is what I was referring to. Yeah, if you don't disturb the natural area, then that's great. But everything that gets dug up that's outside of the, the stormwater designers allowed landscaping area should be replanted with native growth. All right, I, I think that was addressed better in 49. Um, mm -hmm. we, can, we can add some uh, trees and ground cover to this one too um, at a certain spacing. Uh, I did the, the six foot spacing for shrubs and the 12 foot spacing for trees on that one. Um, So, I mean, still my sense is that um, trees are unnecessary, but we could do lots of uh, shrubs and ground cover. Yeah, I mean, as my opinion is good coverage with uh, ground covers, especially evergreens is nice. Although it, some of your lot there is flat, so probably not that important but good coverage of plants. Um, you know, Michael Kirshner said his spreadsheet is a guide. You're not gonna insist on following the, you know, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, but yeah, we're, we wanna move away from the one fern every 20 feet uh, concept. <laughs> All right. Well then finally the, finally the the last comment we had on this one was about that uh, kind of an unfinished line of the where the driveway appeared to drop off. Oh yeah. And now we've got it showing. Let's see. Yeah. It's not the driveway, it's the finished grade. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. No. So that's been fixed. Yeah, so we had this steep drop off here and there wasn't any sort of retaining wall or anything proposed there. So now it's shown slanted and downward there. That looks more reasonable. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. And they, you still have a bit of a wall along the driveway there, probably, right? Or are you able to make that a two to one slope? Along the driveway? Yeah, I thought um, you were raising the grade there on that side of the driveway. At the uh, oh, let's see, what's the driveway? The garage, it was going to be a 
Garage Lab is at 118. Twelve here. Well, if, you're, if you're going to keep those trees, you're not going to be able to change that grade much. You're going to need a wall there. Tree root, putting dirt over tree roots kills kills the roots and harms the tree. So I, I'm not sure. I I don't think that comment was made before. So that was because there was a retaining wall. <laughs> in the plans we saw. Not this, that. Is, this is what it looked like, right? This is what we're... No, not that. Uh, on the plan view, on the site plan, there was a retaining wall called out along that edge of the driveway where that orange line is. Uh, okay. I, did, I didn't have those in the comments. I mean, it's the plans we saw had yeah. a wall so there was no need to comment because I thought it was taken care of. Uh, so I thought, well, th this is a comment. Uh, I believe that these were, these were comments directly from uh, the ACC. These were not my these were not my comments, my my notes. Um, address questions around the grade changes along Front Walk. And continuous east side of driveway, puzzling lean vertical line and north front elevation view on sheet A3.0, an apparent difference between 118 garage slab and existing 112 contour line at driveway edge. So if that puzzling vertical I think line. The claim was whether that was a retaining wall or not that was shown on the plans, we weren't clear as what that was. Yeah. Yeah. And is this the site plan that we saw? Yes, this was, this was okay. 525. Our meeting was on 527. Uh, I thought we had a conversation. We just weren't sure what was what was there at the time because it didn't, it didn't jive with the the elevations. It wasn't it wasn't called out as a retaining wall on here. Yeah. Um, it was confusing. Mm -hmm. So that strange vertical line we're talking is 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 a puzzling one, and so they uh, they they fixed it to grade and just have a slope on it. Well, I'm sorry to be a pain, <laughs> but uh, if you're keeping those trees, you can't be filling over their roots. So there is going to have to be some kind of a wall along that edge of the driveway until the driveway goes down far enough to along the driveway and also alongside the concrete walk. So are we going to propose retaining wall then at the? Well, along the walk, there is that long wall. That's already there, there, yeah. Yeah, but you kind of have to stay with the existing grade within the drip lines of the tree because we're going to be having that fenced off. You're not allowed to dig there. Right. And you're not allowed to put dirt over it either mm -hmm. uh, because that'll kill, that'll smother the roots. So there does need to be, I think, a, a wall. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, John? What, what? Uh, I'd like to see you draw where that wall would go. <clears throat> um, just parallel to the concrete driveway, the right side edge of it. This would be right along here. 
and it would have to be about at the corner there, it would have to be somewhere around, uh, well, the bottom would be 113-ish, and the top would be 117, maybe? 118 is the, yeah, is the garage slab elevation. So somewhere so by there, you're, you've come down a bit already, I think, but uh, however much you've come down at that strip drain, that would be the top of the wall. Okay. And then the, the wall would, I, I believe, get gradually shorter as you go out toward the street. So potentially all the way to the property line. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have your driveway profile in front of me. Um, what your driveway elevation would be at the property line, I don't remember. One fourteen. So that would be pretty close, I would think, to where you could end it. Yeah, because the bottom's at one thirteen. It could be a block wall, you know, I don't think those are not horribly expensive. I don't think, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Do you, you want to make it contingent on that getting, getting an updated plan in to Joel? Um. I don't know. I guess uh, maybe we do want to know what uh, materials. What it'll look like. <laughs> and probably along the house, you can't go all the way up. You'll, you'll have to be, yeah, we'll move that down a little bit closer to the existing. I assume the driveway will be um, sloped a bit to bring the water off into the storm system. Yeah, at, at the garage doors, it'll be pretty flat. And yeah. then it'll start to twist as it goes down. Right. Yeah. I don't remember this property at all, but do we have a variance request for the driveway? Since it's you know up towards the house, it's gonna be a lot wider than 20 feet. Yeah, I understand why they're doing it. Um, I'm just yeah. wondering if- Could we well, consider that to be parking, on-site parking? Yeah, historically, um, the driveway had to be between 12 and 20 at least until it gets to the property line. And then uh, there's allowance for, you know, parking areas or widening for three car garages. And yeah, the, it's, it's flared out for the three car garage and I get that. It only makes sense. Yeah, I, my feeling is the 20 foot width I'm only guessing, but that the reason for it might be to not have long culverts in the ditch. And maybe yeah. also it would look a little overwhelming if it was like 30 or 40 feet. <laughs> um, yeah, that makes sense. Just asking a question. Yeah. Very wide. I figure if, if the square footage is within their open space allowance and it's not going to look really awful from the street. Um, no, I, I, I totally get it. Just I don't recall seeing in the, in the uh, driveway rules where we can go wider than 20 feet without a variance. I mean, it totally makes sense the way it's drawn. Yeah, how wide is that? Just out of curiosity. 
the uh, the front of the garage is there. Front of the garage. Yeah. I can, I can measure it here just a sec. Yeah, it's it's not well defined where the where the driveway ends and the parking begins in the policies, but we do. It is it does say 20, 20 foot max. Pull out my I'll pull out my ruler and I can measure it. I, I don't see it as parking. I see it as access to that third garage or that yeah the second garage the small garage. Mm -hmm. Golf cart yeah. garage. Yeah, so I had a similar question on, uh, it was 12 Sandwich Point. It's had a really big, uh, big wide, really wide, uh, they had a three car garage also. I'm wondering when their, where their driveway began. So at the, uh, I, I agree with Karen, um, as long as it doesn't, cover up their too much ground to take away from their 50% um, open space, then it's cool. But I just don't know if we need a variance for it. Well, we, we had an issue with the last one on, uh, it was on Grandview. Uh, they had a little parking area off to the side and we questioned that area, which that I thought was an area. Yeah, I remember that one. That was a two car garage with a parking area. This is a three car garage. And you know, that's gonna definitely be wider than 20 feet. It has to be. Yeah. So from about, from this dimension here to here, oops, that's about, that's 30 feet. And then kind of, whoops, sorry folks, going across. It's about 34 feet. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah, I hate to do it on a diagonal. <laughs> well, it's, it's questionable, which is the, there's a lot of diagonals there. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I hate to, to give a variance and then they say, oh, okay, we can have our whole driveway be 30 feet wide. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm, I'm good with the design. I was just curious. We, we had a couple of questions on some other people's driveways. So I was just curious on this one, but I'm yeah, it looks, looks like fine to me. They're still meeting their 50%. I'm sure they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they're, let's see. Yeah, we're at 27.3% property coverage. We have 60% open space. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I'll drop my question. <laughs> All right, can we get a motion on this one? I move to approve. I think we got everything covered. Yeah, we just move to approve with just. With that comment about uh, trying to see if you can move the stormwater down yeah. to avoid the I, uh, sump pump. It, yeah, mm -hmm. it's up to him, but yeah. And so a retaining wall along the driveway to. Better accommodate that. Oh. Yeah, oh, the retaining wall. Retaining. All right, so we got comments in the retaining wall along the drive, and then the storm water to move down if possible. Got it. Yep. Can I get a second on that? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, unanimous. Bruce moved. That doesn't get a vote. <laughs> Joel, do we have any others, or is that it? Before I rush you off, <laughs> it would be great if um, I could have a comment, quick comment about Forty Nine Louise View. Uh, how quick would it be? Because we got some other things to get through, and quick if it's comment. policy issues, we're going to have to defer it till next week. But a quick comment for me: if we got a one-to-one -one slope or greater, we want to have a retaining wall in there. Yeah, I, I two to one, two to one or greater. The policies say two to one or greater. Um, yeah, can I just comment on that? I no, I, yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I totally was blind to the way the ratio is defined as horizontal to vertical until Joel pointed it out to me uh, yesterday. Um, 
it just I'm used to things like driveway slopes where you go rise over run. So basically the idea here is for, I assume it doesn't apply to pre-existing uh, grades, you know, that weren't disturbed. Um, uh, but when you cut it. I can read it verbatim. No, well, I, I know it. I just am assuming that the limit of what I would call one to two vertical to horizontal, um, which is like 26 degrees, is because you've cut into the soil. At any rate, I talked to the uh, builder about this and he's fine with like a garden wall, uh, block wall, um, about four feet high. That's all it would take. Pretty, pretty much at the property line. My only comment to that was what would the finish on the block wall be? And what kind of block wall or concrete? Uh, something like an Ellen block wall. Okay. Okay, and you, you could not get in touch with the owners at 51 Louise View Drive? Not yet. Because they had no trouble contacting Glenn and one of the board members. <laughs> oh, is this the tree on the corner? Down the, by the street? No, well, not that one. The oh. older one. Um, let's see. Louise View Drive is in Gate 5. Yes. Um, so you're driving up the hill, up the road, and it's on the right. And just up from them is, from the lot, is 51, which has a nice big empty driveway at the time I showed up and no place else to park. So I parked there and asked the lady, it was okay, and that, that started a conversation. So anyway, um, which they then called people. <laughs> so it should be possible to get in touch with them. Uh, maybe ask Glenn Akramov. Um, okay. He has they, contact information. <laughs> it's just that uh, that their their contact info is not in the system, so yeah. it has to be done it's in person. Certainly. You can go there and knock on their door, probably. Or... Did you get the feeling that that was the owner and not a renter? Yeah. No, they they told me they recently bought that house. They laughed how they bought it sight unseen. They, they, okay. They... Well, that sounds familiar. <laughs> so I mean, the next step is just. To what as Susie suggested for for him to put a letter on the front door or if they're there talk to them and explain that those trees are going to become hazardous and that it's in everyone's interest he he doesn't want to take the stumps out um but he he'll he'll be happy to remove them and down to the stump <clears throat> yeah I tried to talk to them that sounds good. Okay. So I don't know if you can take any action on 49. There's, uh, there's also a more extensive landscaping plan description, uh, which was one of the concerns there. Yeah, show the location and size of the non-native landscaping area. And uh, I guess follow the Whatcom County um, planning schedule. Cool, yeah, something similar anyway. We would like to see people pick plants so that uh, that hopefully makes Joel's job easier um, and give an idea of how far apart they're going to go. Because then he'll be stuck out there with the, the, the contractor who puts one fern every 20 feet and have nothing to point to and say, but you promised more than that. Yeah.
was there anything else on this one? Or it sounds like it's deferred till next week, anyways, right? At least, or next two weeks. You can't do a contingent on getting permission. That's that's fine. Well, if you can get written permission and get it to us real quick, we could do an email vote on that. Didn't we need to see a new landscaping plan thing? Weren't we asking for that? So you just mentioned that, and I don't see uh, anything new in here for that. Am I missing something? I mean, if everything's been addressed, then maybe we can take care of it. But if there's still things hanging, like we still wait for, we're waiting for a, a something showing a uh, retaining wall in uh, landscaping uh, plans to missing something uh i did submit an updated landscaping plan for this so, one Joel, you got something there yeah it is in the it is in the google drive too i'm not i don't know why you why you're not seeing Maybe I'm not. there's there are two there are two versions of the plans now so you can compare the older ones uh, okay. with the newer one the newer ones here dated 6 15 21. And then, nope. oh there we My go google link the google drive link only shows the current meeting are they in the current meeting? He, yeah, Joel added it to the current meeting. It's at the bottom. Oh, okay. I haven't looked recently enough, I guess. Joel, if you could shoot a quick email to everybody when you add stuff, hmm. Um, hmm. that would be wonderful. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. It, it should update your, your stuff automatically, but... Um, well, if I'm not connected... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, sometimes I'm updating them. Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday. There's, um... Yeah, I, I, I get it, but sometimes I just look at these once every couple of days. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I miss them too. Especially maybe if you've got a bunch piled up and it's getting close to the meeting time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think it should be allowed personally. That's just my opinion, but yeah, you're adding should, them that, you know. We should submit them two weeks ahead and be done. <laughs> I agree. Mm -hmm. But we're in build time, and I'd kind of like to see these get moved along as fast as possible. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. But some people work and don't have time just to wait for stuff to get added on and look at them right before a meeting. No, yeah. I understand that. One week would be a good target from my point of view. That uh, everything is there that's going to be that we can then look at it all and make our comments. And not have to worry about our comments becoming out of date. <laughs> yeah, because we still have our agenda to get through. Mm -hmm. Joel, have you seen the landscaping plan? Yeah, it's uh, I, it should be up on your screen screen now. Is it not? Okay. It says area of natural vegetation. Is that the undisturbed? Could be here's your here's our clearing boundary limit line. Okay. And then what is he planting in the rest of that area? Uh and and this in inside boundary here? Yeah. Uh replant natural vegetation area. Okay, is that is that what that uh cloud's supposed to be showing there? With six right. trees and thirty-six shrubs. Okay. And the trees and shrubs are part of the legend. And uh, does it show the square footage of non-native allowed by the stormwater designer? That I took that off the canopy plan. Oh, this one's not separated here. Where is my? Canopy. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the um, landscaping is only one sixty one, and uh -huh. the native is thirty two hundred. So then the the landscaping plan should say should show that rectangle and say everything else replant native trees and shrubs. 
right up to the house. So do we have a stormwater calculation for us to see what the uh, what the allowed uh, area is in uh, in landscaping? Yeah, it's right up here, 161 square feet. Okay, it's just what's on. Okay, he's showing it as part of the uh, diagram. Okay. Yeah, he's got it over the. Yeah. Over the where the trench will be. Okay. So the landscaping plan needs to make it clear that everything except that rectangle is a native veg. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity, Susie or Joel, um, how many currently how many new constructions do we have for next Thursday? Next Thursday? Uh, I know I've got uh, the one of one that was deferred. I've got maybe I don't know. I'm I'm waiting on waiting on plans to come back from from builders. Um, so far, I haven't seen any revised plans come back. But I've got about I think I've got five, four or five in uh, that have been submitted. I don't think they're going to be ready for next week okay joel good question on this particular one that we were just looking at is are we missing anything at this point if we uh approve with uh, requiring a uh wall for erosion control on the steeper slope uh just the wall and uh permission from the neighbors okay, and the we... landscaping plan edit to make sure that that shows the 161 square feet and everything else native Okay, can we approve it with pending those or basically you getting those so we don't have to come back on it again? Yeah, I can yeah. do that, of course. That was kind of the email notification. If they get approval for the trees, uh, email and we can do a vote on that. Okay. I'm, I'm, Bruce, you want a motion? I'm thinking about getting some of these off our table. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to move to approve uh, and then uh, pending the uh, retaining wall for the steep slope, the tree approval, and what was the third? Oh, uh, landscaping plan just to show the, uh, the, the what is going into uh, non-native so that it's meeting 161 square foot uh, allowance. Mm -hmm. Got it. A second on that motion? I'll second. All in favor, including the comments? Aye. Aye. Okay, unanimous. Good, it won't come back, hopefully. Thank you, John. You bet. You bet. Thank you. Joel, anything else you want to sneak in here? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, All righty, man. Thank you much. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. All right, guys. Let's get on to our agenda. Item number four. Six Birdie Lane. Fence request. I move to approve. I can. Uh, multiple times. I, I, I approved it I last time. But. I, I, would, I visited it, and they had their property corners marked. And uh, the fence line is string, strung out right along their property line. Um, apparently the retaining wall is five foot setback from the, the shared property line. So um, if they move the, I, we discussed it, if they move the foot, the fence one foot off the property line, then they'll run right into their big tree. Um, but if they move it much further, you know, far enough to, to get to the other side of the tree, then it doesn't work for them. Um, so what he, what I suggested was that he go one foot off the property line and then go around the tree. And he said, rather than that, he'd rather just end the whole thing in the back, flush with his stairs. Ooh, boy, that's a lot of loss. Yeah, he says he doesn't really need that big an area for his dog. Well, didn't he want this for some grandkids or kids too? Yeah, he did. 
but Chosen. for whatever reason, rather than detour around the, the tree in the corner, it's, I guess it's, it's about that corner there. The you, upper left, the back yeah. left. Yeah. He would rather um, just end it there. Yeah, I just like to see him cut a corner there from the left hand side up to the back to avoid that tree or notch it. Yeah, give him a little more room. I should have gone and looked at this one because I've, he shows those as native as vegetation, existing vegetation, not trees. And I had a second thought on it when I looked at it. Yeah, I don't know what else, how many of those are trees, but they have one really big tree <laughs> right about the corner of there where it's shown. Mm. I think when they drew this, they thought the property line was where it's not. <laughs> well, yeah, they show the existing fence right on the property line in the back. And it's not. I think their their existing fence probably is. Oh you know, yeah, exactly. you're right. Fence right behind. Yeah, you're right. So, so you're saying, they're five foot from there. So you're saying you, they just need to avoid one tree? Couldn't they just angle it across here? Make a jog out of that corner? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, um, but they didn't. They didn't. He didn't want to do that. <laughs> um, okay. I move that we approve his fence with a one with a four foot setback uh, variance, so he's one foot off the property line, and we approve it to where he can angle he can angle that corner to avoid the tree in the corner instead of going around it to avoid hitting the roots. And if he doesn't want to build it that way, fine. Yeah, if he wants to move it into the steps, that's fine too. I don't know if we can, he put too many colors in here to make it easy to put a little sketch. <laughs> but, <laughs> we get a second on Bruce's motion. I'll second that. All in favor with the comments to be able to hang fence around that tree. Or however, Bruce, you want to word that so Susie gets it correctly? Or who's, who's keeping notes tonight? Is it Susie? Hey, Susie, you, want, are you behind the flag there, the, the boat and stuff, or who do we got? The, not, sure, <laughs> not sure she's there anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she is. Um, Karen's the official keeper. <laughs> she started to come back. Hey, Karen, you want to figure that one out? You were uh, four foot rear variance. Um, avoid. Large tree. Yeah, just angle the corner in so that it avoids the tree. So are we saying they want to move that yellow line towards the behind the house? That's running left to right. They're showing five foot from the property line right now. On their yeah, drive. Bruce, here uh, sketch again. How Bruce had it drawn on there is exactly how I would agree with that. You see how he's drawn the fence in there? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that, you know, right here, they've got a five foot dimension from the property line. Yeah. But they're, in reality, they're not asking for a variance. In reality, that's not, not accurate. They, in between drawing this, they must have had the surveyor out because they showed me uh -huh. the survey pins. And uh, their existing fence is right on the on the property line, and they were showing their new fence right right along the property line. Also, actually, if they did what the if they put it offset five feet from the, the existing fence, it would hit the existing fence right in the middle of the gate. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, hi, Susie. Okay, good. I was trying to speak to you. You just couldn't hear me, I swear. We just didn't want to acknowledge it. And what happened there? You didn't have a mute symbol or anything. Uh, I think it switched to one of my other devices somehow, which is odd. <laughs> so 
I was going by what's drawn here. Yeah, so is I. All right, so we're going to put uh, Bruce's sketch in there. Okay. <laughs> As part of our comments to avoid that tree. And we had a first and second on that. I believe, Tom, you seconded that, correct? I did. I did. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. Okay. Motion approved. Right, approved. What we're approving probably starts his fence in the middle of his gate, or maybe right at the edge of his gate, huh? Because he's showing it five foot off the property line. Yeah, he's showing it five feet offset from the old fence, which is very strange. Yeah, I don't see a gate. There is a gate there in that side of the, the existing fence. Yeah. yeah, but that would be his problem. He's showing it that way. He's drawing it that way. If it's not going to work, then he's going to have to resubmit. Yeah. Is that an electric pencil sharpener? <laughs> You got All one. right. <laughs> Item number five, 15 Fairway Lane. Exterior alteration request. I would move to approve. This makes sense to me. Same thing I did. Oh, yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. Oh, man. Broke another lead. <laughs> Frustrated, I guess. <laughs> All right, item number six, 22 Little Strawberry Lane. We got a fence request followed by a variance request. Two separate items. This one. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do with this. I can, for once, I can understand his privacy a privacy fence on 24 feet, not 42, because it's just blocking the deteriorating uh, oh. walls of the neighbors right on the property line. But we could not find the corners on the other side. I mean, how do you okay a fence that's going up against the property line if there's no property line delineated? This I, I met with this guy, and he's willing to do whatever we suggest, really. If we want to move the 24-foot wall away from that uh, piece of crap retaining wall, he will do that. I might understand why he wants to do it the way he is, but he also understands the egress. Um, he's more than willing to jog around those big tree roots. Is he willing to pull it back on the other side? Because that's where the property line really isn't marked. Um, yeah. On the 18 foot side? Uh, yeah, on the 18 foot side. Yeah, I, 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 the neighbor came out. That that side runs right along the Little Strawberry Trail. Yeah, and there's an access point there, which there's no corners marked on his side of it. Yeah, and the neighbor was completely fine with it. Yeah, but that's Sudden Valley public land. Right. So as long as it's on the property lot, you know, I, I'm more than willing to give him a variance. But, but without the survey pins marked. will do whatever we ask him to do. Yeah. Without the pins marked, then he could be building his fence on Sudden Valley land. See, that's the point is how do you know where his line is to give him a variance from? Yeah, uh, the, his neighbor used to be on the ACC. His name was yeah. Simon. Who? Sam. And he said where he has it marked is perfectly cool. But like you say, if, if the property lines aren't marked, it didn't well, look to me like he was egressing into the, the trailhead. Yeah, the neighbor shouldn't have anything to say about it because it's not the neighbor's land. Yeah. Well, I get that. Maybe it's something we have to request that he has his property corner staked. 
Yeah, the only stake he was able to find was at the back of the property on that 24 foot section yeah. alongside that retaining wall. I don't know how much that costs, to be honest with you. Yeah. We had it done here. It's, it's fairly pricey. And he's looking for a place for to let his dog out. And even the way it's shown here, it's not very big. <laughs> it's still a pretty small area. So the more we shrink it, the worse it's going to get. He's got a Labrador. But he'll work with us. What do you guys want to do? You want a motion on the variance first and then the fence, or just want to go ahead with both? It's hard because the corners aren't staked. Yeah, I don't know what to do without the corners. If we had some other way to verify where his property line was. You could certainly build flush with his house on that side. That might be halfway up the slope there. There was a slope there. Yeah, you know, we can do that. We can request that the uh, property lines be staked and marked. Either that or, or draw it back to where it's obviously within the setbacks. You know, based on what I observed, even though the, you know, if you're looking at his drawing, the top left corner is not staked, his two foot variance request on the back, he's, he, he has it staked right on the property line according to the one marker that is locatable on the yeah yeah that's, just that's what I saw. It, it's not two foot but it's all open space back there so i really didn't have a problem with it as long as he jogged around the tree roots it's still one one foot short so he can access but and, but again you don't know where 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 that back corner is where he's aiming at yeah the left corner the left corner yeah do you guys want to defer until corners are staked? I don't know how we could get around it. Yeah, I, you're probably right. Can I get a motion on that? Move to defer until the corners are staked. Second? I'll, I'll second, second that. OK, I'll just vote in favor. <laughs> All in favor? All right, unanimous, deferred until the corners are staked. Karen, what's Both your say items, item number six, and item number seven. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to item number eight, 22 Green Hill Road. Exterior alteration request. Code approve. Yep, I'll second that. All uh, in favor? Approve to defer. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm just keeping. Can, can we mm -hmm. uh, add a comment? Um, they haven't dimensioned the roof, so give them a foot and a half larger than the deck on all sides, maybe. You said one foot would be enough, but I think a foot and a half would be yeah. safer. We tried to check the best we could for for uh, where the property line was on this for his setback off the road, and they had... What was it they came up with that did show a sort of where the thing was and made it look like that there wasn't going to be a problem. So that's just what we went with. They had a they had the, the lands they had a landscaping plan that was showing where the thing was and they had plenty of room based on that. But other than that, we couldn't find it on the ground. Oh wait, they do say nineteen seven inches wide by twelve foot deep. By 16 feet high. Yeah. I got it. Okay. Anyway, did we vote on this yet? Did not. Yep. Wait, no, we did. We had mm -hmm. a vote what was to approve. Yep. Bruce mm -hmm. voted to approve or made a motion to approve and I seconded. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay. All right, number item number nine, eight lookout mountain lane. Exterior mm -hmm. alter request. Move okay. to approve. Second. All in favor? 
All right, unanimous. Well, we're flying now. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 10, 49 Valley Crest Way, exterior alteration request. Well, no proof. Yeah, it was kind of hard to walk the back of the property to find out where their back property corners were, but the the proposal here is pretty small area, so yeah, I'll second that. We got the personal tour when we're up. Oh, did you? Yeah. All in favor? All right, unanimous. Yes, yeah, since they've already started, they got all the material there. <laughs> Okay, here it is. Oh, oh right. we, we Item seven, 36 Deer Run Lane. Can I, can I, I think I we back up a little bit? this one. It's already painted. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, okay, move to approve. I'm sorry. 49, <laughs> 49 Valley Crest. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. Um, they're proposing gravel in the right of way, so the Sun Valley has to approve that. Yeah, I was kind of confused on that. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. I wasn't really sure if they were proposing that or not, or if that's existing. You're right. That's a sudden they, yeah, just we told them that you would mention that they have to connect with Sudden Valley. I'm sorry, I forgot that one. Sure thing. I'll get Darren out there. Yeah, yeah. but it's mm -hmm. not a ditch. It's, a, it's a basically the runoffs going the other way. Well, actually, the runoff's going straight to their house is what's happening. Yeah. And then there was only one other thing that Sun Valley might be concerned about. If they put that retaining wall right along, you know, pretty close to the street, and they don't make it visible from the street, I don't know if anybody in the winter might slide off over the edge. It would be a very short retaining wall. It's not going to be very high. No, I mean, drive, cars driving down the icy roads. <laughs> Oh, well, it'll keep them from going into the house. <laughs> Tell them to add one block higher to block to stop the car, to stop no. the wheel from going and With rebar. Yeah. And bowling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, next one. <laughs> okay, all right, back to item number 11, 36 Deer Run Lane. Yeah. I mean, asking forgiveness. Yeah. yeah. I'd move to approve. I would like to say no, just because it's already painted. But can we find them? His colors are just fine. We yeah. could theoretically oh. find them. It's a hundred dollars. Yeah. Wait. Second, the discourages this kind of activity in the future. I don't have a problem imposing a fine if they're asking for permission after the fact. I guess that's true. They had nice colors. Yeah, it is. I'm leaving that up to uh, Sudden Valley because this, we're just approving the colors at this point. Yeah, I really. Can I get a uh, second on your motion? So it's moved to approve with possible violations of Sudden Valley so chooses. Sounds uh, good. Okay, sounds good. So. On. I, you know, I seconded it a while back, so. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. All right, you're <laughs> All right, item number 12, 20 Shetland Court, exterior uh, alteration I request. I love her diagram. I really do. <laughs> I moved to approve. I went into the office and saw the materials. Oh. I second. Karen and I got the, uh, got the personal tour out there again. She was really, really into uh, trying to make things work. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's unanimous. Item number 13, 81 Polo Park Drive, variance request. Oh, I move to deny, and I don't want to see them again until they've got the corners marked and the fence line marked where it's going to go. We've yeah, seen property that. lines, everything. This is the third time I've been to this place, and he hasn't hey. done anything different. He's hey, never Susie. done anything. Susie, have yes. you ever told them, like on the phone or on, on a letter or something, about yes. this? 
I have. Um, I will. I will reach out and let him know that we cannot accept any more applications until he marks things. He, he should also uh, use the right form, which would clue him in. <laughs> right. I wasn't sure if this resulted from talking to you guys, and so that's why we got this. And I, I forgive me. I just put it on because I put the requests on. Well, you know, <laughs> that's your job. Yeah. I started to go back to my truck and get my 50 foot tape measure and I said screw this man I've been here too many times it's too hard getting up that slope <laughs> no the move the motion is denied did I get a second I second all in favor of denial all right that's unanimous and Susie you have the required recommendations for us to come out there and look at it again correct yes Okay, very good. Item number 14, nine Morning Glory Drive, fence request. Okay, yeah, I met with these people too. Um, and they're right, they have absolutely, they got two big dogs. They have no room in the back of their house unless they buy the house next door and put the dogs in there. Uh, and <laughs> they agreed to do whatever, if they'll, Move their fence posts, make sure they avoid tree roots. Um, yeah, it, it does encroach into the 20 foot zone from the road, but it's the only option they've got. This house probably should have never been built. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but maybe large dog owners shouldn't live in it. <laughs> well, it's how far is it away from the house behind them? Eight feet, 10 feet? That's typical. Can reach out and touch a neighbor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But how many houses do we have like that? <laughs> I, I yeah. saw this as their only option to have a fenced area for their dogs. And they're I sweet did dogs. Notice, they're real friendly. I did mm -hmm. want to make the comment that one of their pins is, is uh, if they build where their pin is, it'll be encroaching on the other, on the Beaver Ridge place right away. Because they need to make sure that they line up with the neighbor's frontage, which they didn't. Those look to me like they're quite a ways away. When Bruce and I were there last time, they couldn't find their corner pins. So we, we said, look, the neighbor's house, the front of the neighbor's house is all, in all likelihood set back 20 feet from that side road. And so if you stay in line with that, you should be good. If you want to do better than that, you should have your corners marked. Yeah, I just really felt sorry for these people. It's only a few they feet. They want to do everything they can to maintain the vegetation and everything is there. They don't want to disturb anything. So what's your motion? I move to approve just avoid the tree roots. I've got some conditions I'd like to throw in there. Okay. I would like to see them come back on that one side so they're even with the house next to them there so it doesn't look like they're going up in their front yard. The house behind them? Yeah. So that would be the 20 foot off the other road, just like Karen was saying. Plus they're their option A or whatever it was, was using the two by four uh, old oh, right. wire. Yeah. And that that looks like, that doesn't look good. That looks like uh, shit, I'll say it. I would like to approve it with our standard and since they're going into the front yard and they want a tall one that they use the black wire, the four by four hog wire that blends in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no world wire. Yeah. I think we have another one that's got that too, don't we? So can we get a second on Bruce's motion? I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll amend mine. Or amend yeah. his All right. right. And I'll second Tom's uh, amended. <laughs> mine. All right. All in favor? It sounds like everyone, so it's unanimous. So Susie, with the comments, Bruce's comments. Yes. 
the avoiding the tree roots, the using the black wire, the coming back to even with the next house. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And it's the four by four grid, not the, and the regular heavier hog wire, not the rolled uh, two by four. Okay. Yeah, the deco mesh. Yeah. And I did compliment her on her variance request, even though not on the proper form. It's a pretty nicely written letter. Hey, item number 15, 11 Honeycomb Lane, exterior alteration request. Move to approve. I remember what it was. Um, I'll second it. Yeah, it sounds like it's just a second request. Um, oh, the country. They previously gotten approved and just yeah. didn't get painted in time. <laughs> Painting it gray. Yeah. All in favor? Uh, All right, unanimous. Beautiful. Move to All adjourn. Right. Guys, <laughs> hey, now as far as new business, the only thing I wanted to say tonight is we need to start thinking about policy changes. And I know, Karen, you had a couple things you'd like to change, and, and we probably all do as we look through the in the old policies and stuff. There might be some changes that are seeing things change out in the community. We might need to address, like, one is concrete uh, driveway, you know, 20 foot. A lot of people have three car garages, they do need extra parking and so forth. Some things like that, because we're supposedly we're gonna have a land planner coming on that'll help get these things through uh, the board and, and help us with the policy changes. Uh, so any ideas we have, we can start making uh, notes and talk about them in fu uh, future meetings and come to an agreement on what we wanna see changed. Uh, it might just be good to have that list ready to hand to someone. Are we allowed to comment on the fines and fees schedule? Yes, of course. <laughs> I think everything. And I, think I, everything. I would definitely revisit the architectural um, fines and fees if I were you guys, because some of them don't make any sense. There's one where they can change the exterior of a home and it's like a $100, $200 fee. You know, it, for new constructions, it's crazy. They should be fined a lot more for changing things. So, and the one thing I noticed that was really bad Quite a few things had just a, you know, for failure to comply was just like a $350 fine. Yeah. All of those failure to comply should, should be a, an amount per week or an amount per day or something like that. So that, they, you know. yeah. Some of these things, they ought to change things back when they just, when you tell them to do it one, one, do, they're not allowed to do a certain thing and they do it anyway, they had to be fined continuously until it's changed back to the way it wasn't supposed to. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's what Karen was saying, like a daily fee. Every day it stays that way or whatever. You're 50 bucks, 100 bucks a day or whatever. It's significant at some point. Yeah. You get a grace period, but then. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, Susie, uh, how are we doing on compliance things? I know you were trying to move forward with that on, uh, you know, some issues with outstanding people building sheds or whatever in the front of their houses and parking their RVs out front and having their in-laws live there. How are so, those things coming along? So it looks like we may have some changes of plan. Um, I don't know how much has been shared with everybody, and I'm afraid to talk about anything out of turn. So uh, I'm going to let you wait to hear some news um, from somebody more official than I am before I try to talk about what the future holds. Yeah, but Great, thanks for the confidence. I, I can tell you that I won't be here. Wow. Is oh, that that's not good right news. next to 22 Strawberry Lane? I don't think that's been approved by the ACC. Right. So like That's I said, wow. un unfortunately, I'm not going to be here much longer, probably just another week before I go on vacation. Oh. And then I won't yeah, so be anymore. So I'm not quite sure how they plan to take care of things. I do know that some other things have happened as well. So I will just let you wait to hear about those things. Was that your decision? Um, yes, this is my decision to leave. However, I will say that I was heavily influenced by what occurred this week with the board. So look at the board meeting. 
Um, you, I wouldn't say that the meetings are going to explain everything to you. I would wait for, for Glenn to talk to you and for the board to address you, I guess. I'm sorry to see you go. Oh, uh, it's okay. Don't worry at all. I have great references from my bosses. Everything is fine for me. And hopefully everything will be great for you guys. No matter what, Joel will be around. So you'll get to get through your new constructions this summer. Hopefully he'll be around next year as well. And I, I know that Sudden Valley will be just fine. Well, that's a blow. Um, yeah. Yeah, I fear that it might get worse before it gets better. So just hang on, guys. <laughs> wow. All right, I'll contact a realtor tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a good time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, All right, Susan. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate everything you've done for us. Yeah. yeah, I have absolutely loved working with all of you. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah, you've been really great. We'll miss you. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to miss you guys like crazy. These meetings have been fun. So thank you. Yeah. And we'll fun, huh? One more thing for new business. I brought this up with Glenn last week about boat parking, and he kind of suggested it's something we could do. Um, but since then, it's kind of gotten worse. And marina parking, there's only so many boat slips available. Yeah, I, I have there's heard that it is a problem. Right people that don't live in Sun Valley, and I've got a neighbor that want, is waiting for a slip. Yes, I, I hear that the marina has several issues that are occurring. I couldn't tell you anything about them, unfortunately. Okay. I yeah, just, Tom, are you wet slips or dry slips? I'm sorry? Were you talking about wet slips or dry slips that are not oh. available? Oh. Both. Oh. Both. Oh. Yeah, well, that's a tough one. I, I know... Uh, I've seen some things. Uh, my boat has been since March sitting in the boat shop. So, and I'm not supposed to get it back till next month. So I have a wet slip that's sitting there empty for you're all this. You're a resident. You're paying your fees. My my beef is with the non-residents that are getting preference over residents of Sun Valley. That just sucks to me. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's because they already have a spot and they're not willing to kick, you know, kick uh, people who have a spot out, even if they're non-residents. That needs to change. Like Canadians. Was a uh, I, and the so they're like vacation homes here or whatever. Yeah. It's a lot easier for somebody that lives outside of Sun Valley to park their boat elsewhere and pull it in when they want to use it than it is for a Sun Valley resident to have to take it to Bellingham and park it and then bring it in every time they want to use it. Uh, that to me is just not fair. Yeah. So yeah, I have about, I'm not in favor necessarily of them sitting in front of people's houses myself. That's just my opinion or sitting in their driveways because it's, it's a personal opinion of what's a, uh, you know, hey, my boat's a pile of junk or my boat's great, you know? <laughs> it's a personal opinion. Yeah, my well, only that, that was the day before Memorial Day to the day after Labor Day. If you want to park it in your driveway because you can't get a dry slip, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's yeah. something we could look at right as policy. That's part of our land planner can help change those things. Yeah, it's not in the ACC policy, so I was kind of surprised when Glenn said that maybe it was something we would want to take up because it's wrong. There's some regulation. Yeah. That's rules and regulations. That's the board does that. Yeah. The HOA. That needs to be addressed. Along yeah, with and I can get, uh, you can get temporary. So I had my boat here like last year. It sat out here for a month while I was working on it. And I was able to get temporary uh, parking pass, have it sit out front in my driveway. But it fits in my driveway, but have it sit out there and uh, be able to do that. You can get that from security. And I know you've gotten that for uh, RVs. Yeah, the only reason it stayed there is I couldn't get a tow company to come out here and pick it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel the same way about the pool. You know, I don't think that non-residents should be able to use the pool if there's residents that want to come in and use the pool. The thing is, that's yeah, part of our part. 
the marina, for that matter, the whole darn marina down there. You got ninety percent of it's for dogs, and uh, and they're all public, you know, outside people coming in here and parking and using the I place up. All four window decals for residents and charge for outside use. I'm all for that. Yeah. I know that we uh, have to let the outsiders in as long as we're still a 501c4 yeah. organization. The question is, what money do we save by being that kind of an organization? Is it is it enough to be worth it? And I don't really know the answer to that question. Well, the price difference between a non-resident and a resident is not that great for boat slips or yeah. dry, dry storage. What it's I mean is, is just like it's not for the golf course, you know. Sun Valley the gets a tax break. For a, a resident golfer and a non-resident golfer is a hundred bucks, something like that. Yeah. Why bother? Sun, Sun Valley is not allowed to make a profit off the outsiders if we keep this five hundred one c four tax uh, status. Well, yeah. You don't have to make money as long as you keep your investing it into the corporation. It's not illegal to make a profit as long as you're not writing it off as a profit. You have to reinvest it back into the valley. I don't We're think we can block it. Act. For public benefit nonprofit, yeah. which means, you know, that's a that's a special designation. Um, that means public benefit means means we cannot be only of benefit to ourselves. So I don't know all the all the laws about that, and I don't know how much money we save by being that type of an organization. That would be something to know. <laughs> yeah, I, I have had a little experience with it, and and Sun Valley does some crazy things for a nonprofit. When it comes you know, it's my understanding that's why they got rid of security gates and so forth because we didn't have to pay property taxes on the tax to make it public land, so public can come in and use it. But I do have an issue with the fact that. We're maintaining the bathroom facilities, the trash cans, the marina, and all that kinds of things, and it's open to the public. Lifeguards. So somewhat of an issue there. So there's got to be a cost savings, like Karen said, somewhere in there. I'm not sure what the dollar amount is, but it must be beneficial to them somehow. Seems like this discussion was before, and it seemed like the only thing we could really do is charge for parking, which we really should be doing. We should be charging for parking for anybody that's not a resident. But that, that at least isn't limiting people coming in and stuff. Yeah, well, I agree. You can't park down there on a nice weekend anyway. There's no room. <laughs> no, I've gone down to my, my dry slip before when I had my boat out last year. So like boat stands for bust out another thousand, right? So last year my boat was in the shop again and uh, I went down to the marina and there was a, a car and trailer parked in my dry slip. <laughs> <laughs> parked in there, man. I, that's what I told my wife. I was like, I should sit there and charge them like 10 bucks a day to park there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think we're still being recorded. Still be recorded. So we should probably uh, call it a night. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Let's, I uh, moved the meeting Thank to be you. adjourned here. It's uh, 835. Not bad. I appreciate yeah, the time. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night. Susie. Good night, Susie. Good night. Good night.